Welcome back, everybody. This is Mr. Longo, and we are here to talk about coordinate trigonometry, which basically means Sokotoa just on a coordinate plane. So I'm going to show you the first one in pretty good detail, show you where everything comes from. I will tell you that if you know how to draw this without drawing a coordinate plane, you go right ahead. It's pretty simple to do. The only thing we have to do is think about where is negative 3 comma 4. That would be 3 units to the left and 4 units up. So negative 3 comma 4 is right here. Now, of course, we're going to draw our line that goes straight to the origin, also known as our terminal side. And we always go to the x-axis. So that angle over there by the origin is known as theta, and we just have to think about the dimensions of this triangle. So the dimensions of this triangle are 3 to the left and 4 up. So remember, going left is negative, going up is positive. So we have negative 3 and 4. So I'm just going to draw this a little bit larger for you to see what we're doing. We have a right triangle with theta, we have negative 3 for the bottom, and we have 4, and of course that's our right angle. So in order to do trigonometry where we're just writing ratios, we need all three sides. So you need to do the Pythagorean theorem to find this guy. So we have negative 3 squared plus 4 squared is equal to c squared, and we get that our hypotenuse is 5. So sine is opposite over the hypotenuse, so our sine is 4 fifths. Cosine is adjacent over the hypotenuse, so we have negative 3 fifths. And tangent is opposite over adjacent, so we have 4 over a negative 3. Now we don't have to put the negative on the bottom, that's just weird. So whenever you could just put the negative on top or in front. Um, we don't usually put a negative in the bottom, it's just weird notation. You don't walk around saying um, four negative thirds. You would say negative four thirds. So negative goes in front or the top. Doesn't matter to me. Just pick one of those two. Then, of course, cosecant, secant, and cotangent are just the reciprocals of sine, cosine, and tangent. So once you find those, you're good to go. So we just have to flip them. We have five fourths, negative five thirds, and negative three fourths. And that's it. That's how you do coordinate trig. Um, so again, you don't need to draw the coordinate plane unless it helps you. If it helps you do it, you go right ahead. Okay? So we'll talk about the next one really quick, and um, then we'll give you one to try on your own. So like I said, you don't really need the coordinate plane. This is 4, 8. So we know 4 is 4 to the right in terms of our x, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and 8 is going up, so we would be going up 8, and basically we're going to have our coordinate over here at 4, 8, but our right triangle is going to look like this. Here's our right angle, and of course theta is by the origin. Our horizontal x direction is 4, and our vertical direction is 8. So we're going to have to do the Pythagorean theorem here, and this one will kind of work out a little bit just so you feel a little bit more comfortable. We're going to have 4 squared plus 8 squared is equal to c squared. And that right there is going to give you something a little bit different. So we're going to have our 16 plus 64 is equal to c squared. Um, add those guys together and we have 80 is equal to c squared, and when you square root both sides, We've already talked about this, of course. Um, we're going to get C is equal to, and I'm not going to let you do a decimal. You have to give an exact answer. So you have to break down your 80, and you're going to end up with 4 root 5. If you do not remember how to simplify radicals, you need to make sure that you go back and figure that out. So this is 4 root 5. For our hypotenuse. Now here's something you need to know. Hypotenuse is always positive. No matter where you're at, the hypotenuse is positive. 
Um, and again, do not give me a decimal. So now we get to go state our sine, cosine, and tangent. And you're going to have more radical rules that you're going to have to remember. So sine is opposite over the hypotenuse. So we have 8 over 4 root 5, which means our reciprocal would be 4 root 5 over 8. But do not forget, you must simplify your answers. So 8 over 4 is going to give us 2 over 1. And we can't have a radical in the denominator either. So we must simplify that to 2 root 5 over 5. If you forgot how to do that, you have 2 over the square root of 5. You need to multiply both the top and bottom by the square root of 5 because that's just a fancy version of 1. So you have 2 root 5 over the square root of 25, which we know is 5. So we have 2 root 5 over 5. Okay, that's your reminder on how to get rid of a radical in the denominator. It's called rationalizing your denominator. This guy over here, we just have to, of course, simplify the 4 over 8. The radical's already on top, so we're good to go. Um, so this is just going to be the square root of 5 over 2. All right? So that's it. So then we go on to the next one. Um, the next part is uh, cosine. So cosine is adjacent over the hypotenuse. So adjacent would be 4 over the hypotenuse, 4 root 5. And of course, the reciprocal would be 4 root 5 over 4. And just make sure you simplify both of them. So these would cancel, so you're at 1 over root 5. You have to multiply the top and bottom. This would simplify to the square root of 5 over 5. These 4s would just cancel, so this is just the square root of 5. Last one, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So if we're working with opposite over adjacent, we're just going to have 8 over 4 and 4 over 8. Of course, you must simplify them. So 8 over 4 is, of course, 2 and 4 eighths is 1 half. So that one was a little difficult because of the radical. And in this unit, a lot of times you're going to have to give exact answers. So make sure you remember how to work with radicals. It's extremely important. So the last one is for you. I would like you to give this one a try, pause the video, draw the triangle, find your hypotenuse, and list all six trig functions. As soon as you are ready to play, um, just click go and see if you got it right. Okay, so here's our angle. And we have negative 6, so we're going to go left 6. And then our negative 8 means we're going to go down 8. And then, of course, we connect with our hypotenuse. Um, here's our right angle. And we would do the Pythagorean theorem. We would do 6 squared plus 8 squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. So you should have 10 for your hypotenuse. Do not tell me that you have a negative because the hypotenuse is always positive and also negative 6 squared plus a negative 8 squared is going to give you a positive 36 and a positive 64. Make sure you square the negative. Um, so after we find out that our hypotenuse is 10, what you need to do is set up all of your sides. Um, we have our opposite adjacent and hypotenuse. So for sine, you should have negative 8 over 10, which we know is negative 4 fifths. And our reciprocal, you should have negative 5 fourths. Cosine is adjacent over the hypotenuse. So negative 6 over 10 is going to give us negative 3 fifths. And our secant would be negative 5 thirds. Last one, our tangent is opposite over adjacent. So we have negative 8 over a negative 6. So that simplifies to a positive 4 thirds. And that means our cotangent is 3 fourths. Okay? So here's the thing. Um, tangent is going to be positive in the third quadrant because we're going to be doing sine divided by cosine and all that. Um, and a negative divided by a negative is positive. Okay? So make sure you remember that. Um, whenever you have one or two of these negative, 
you're going to have two trig functions be negative and only one will be positive. Um, if they are both positive, then all three will be positive. Okay? So that's it for coordinate trig. This is Longo and I'm out. See you. Bye.